Hi, and welcome to the When Harry Met Ani podcast, episode number 17. My name is Emily. I live in Hershey, Pennsylvania with my husband and two cats, Harry and Onyx, the namesakes of the podcast. Um, and by day I'm an attorney, um, but I'm currently on vacation and I am staying right now in Fraser, Colorado. So I thought it would be kind of cool to have a different setting and film uh, what I've been up to, um, some of the local yarn shops I've been able to visit out here in Colorado and put out an episode. So I hope you enjoy this. It's a little bit different. It's when Harry met Ani on the road. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Just a heads up though, um, this is going to be a podcast that is very heavy on the stash quisitions. So if that's not your thing, I totally understand. Um, and thanks for joining anyway. And you know, hop in and out whenever you want. But I do post all of my show notes in the YouTube description. So you can check that for timestamps and a little preview of what I'll be talking about and see what is interesting to you and what might not be. If you can find me on uh, social media on Instagram as at when Harry met Ani and on Ravelry as M Meister. And if you are returning to the podcast, thank you so much for coming back. I always love hearing what you think and reading, reading and responding to comments. And if you're new, thanks so much for joining and for checking me out. I hope you like it. Um, as always, if you like this video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel so that you know when I post a new episode. Objects. I have one finished object. I have one work in progress that I'm going to show. Um, I'm currently working on three projects, but the other two I haven't really made a whole lot of progress on. And then uh, last for prime time, I'm going to go through um, some of the uh, things that I have purchased while on vacation and while exploring some of the local yarn shops in the Denver and Fort Collins areas. Um, so I hope you stick around and I will jump right into finished objects. This is the Cobbled Path Cowl by Lydra Scott. I test knit this. I actually heard about this cowl um, on Instagram and Lydra was calling for test knitters, so I um, applied to be a test knitter for her project. She has a Ravelry group called Heirloom Goods and um, posts calls for test knitters. So I just loved the, um, the flower color work motif in this cowl, and I went stash diving and found um, two colors in deep deep stash that I thought would be good for this cowl. So the white cream is Sirdar Snuggly DK. It is 55% nylon, 45% acrylic, and then this um, green, blue, and yellow color is Simplicity by Haiku. It is a 55% superwash merino, 28% acrylic, 17% nylon. Um, this, I made this in probably 10 days. Uh, this was what I was primarily working on when I was on the plane. So before I came to, uh, Colorado, I went to Hawaii for my friend's wedding, which was awesome. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So, um, the way Lydra does her test knits is that she, um, releases them in parts so that you finish the first part, take a picture, send it to her, and then she gives you the second part of the pattern and so on and so forth. So I finished part two on the plane over to Hawaii um, and that was the bulk of the color work. And then part three was the last part of the color work and then um, the ribbing. So I'll just put it on and show you how, how it looks. Um, you know, obviously it's August, so I probably won't get a lot of wear out of this until a few months from now, but just a fun cowl. Move closer so you can see it. And, yeah. Um, Lydra right now is looking for test knitters for her mittens that Ha incorporate the same color work pattern. So I haven't decided whether I'm going to apply for that, but I actually have quite a bit of um, this Sirdar left. I have a whole other skein, and I have some, or the this is the Simplicity, um, and then the Sirdar, I have plenty of that as well. 
Um, at the end of the cowl, I had this much left for the uh, simplicity. I was kind of bummed because I really like the blue in here and I had just gotten to the blue at the end and so didn't have a whole lot of blue. It ended up being primarily the yellow color and the green. Um, and then this is how much I had of the Sirdar Snuggly DK. Contrary to its name, it is not as snuggly as I thought it would be. And originally, I'd mentioned in my previous episode, I bought this to make um, a baby sweater that required two balls of this. And it is not as soft as I as I remembered, so I'm not sure if that's just how I have been storing it or if it just is, you know, acrylic and that's how it is. Um, but yeah, so this is the Cobble Path Cowl by Ledra Scott. Next up are works in progress. I technically have three works in progress with me on my trip, but I haven't made a whole lot of progress on two of them, which you have seen before if you've watched uh, the last couple of episodes of When Harry Met Ani. Um, but I am currently have, I currently have in this project bag by Rock Solid Designs. It's my beer project bag. Um, I have two projects in here and this is the bag that I've been traveling with on the plane because um, in my personal item I bring a backpack and I just chuck this on the top of the backpack and it is easily accessible when I am on the plane and it's very compact um, and it holds its shape which I really like. So in here I have the Toe Up Socks with a Difference by Wendy Johnson. They're the socks that I'm knitting out of Felici self-striping yarn from Knit Picks in the ribbit color for my dad. I've only put about a stripe's worth of progress onto them since you've last seen them, so I'm not gonna take them out and show them. Um, and then the other project I have in here is the Cafe Knitting Shawl by Stephen West. Again, I've only put about eight rows on that, so it really looks identical to what I showed in the last episode, especially because I'm on the same section. And I still feel the same way about it, that it's it's really a slog and I'm not enjoying it as much as I thought I would, but I'm gonna keep going. It's on my 2019 Make 9. And I think it will be a really beautiful finished piece and finished garment, but I'm just not enjoying the sections right now. That's just me. So. These are my, uh, this is my travel bag for my knitting projects. I have this with me on my lap in the car and, and on the plane. So I just thought I would show how, how I've been traveling with my projects. I am working on a crochet project. So crocheters rejoice. I advertise this as a knitting and crochet project podcast, but I don't typically have a ton of crochet. I've been very much about the knitting uh, recently over the past couple of years, but I could not pass up the opportunity to start this crochet project. It is in my John R. Bunn textiles canvas bag. Um, I had ordered two skeins of John Arbon and it came with this bag, which is a nice project bag, and I figured um, it, it would be a nice one to keep projects that um, aren't necessarily in the traveling rotation um, in this bag. So I have the Rock Solid Designs bag that I'm carrying with me, and then I also have the John, John Arbon Textiles simple canvas bag that I've been chucking in my suitcase. So in here, I am working on this pattern, which is the Stormy Seas Scarf by Dorian Owen. And I picked this up at Fancy Tiger Crafts in Denver. And it was a pattern that the designer had made for Yarn Along the Rockies 2019. So um, the suggested yarn to make this scarf was this color which I actually purchased, but I will be making a different project with that yarn. The yarn that is recommended is the Colorful Eclectic Pac Pathfinder Sock in Fancy Sea Glass, which was also a yarn along the Rockies exclusive. So we visited Fancy Tiger Crafts just a couple days after the Yarn Along the Rockies yarn crawl had ended, um, but they still had several displays with these free patterns and recommended yarn. Instead of using the fancy sea glass color, I picked up this yarn instead, which is Lola Bean Co. Lola Bean Yarn Co. Bean Sprout Fingering 
It is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. There's 400 yards in this skein, and the color is called Not So Mellow Yellow. Um, really beautiful, squishy, and bright, and I asked Logan what he thought, and he said that he thought it would look good with my complexion, so we'll see. Um, but here's my progress so far. I have a, mark, a stitch marker indicating the right side of the work. Um, and this is a free pattern on Ravelry. I, I went and checked. So if you're, if you're interested in checking out um, this pattern that was designed for the Yarn Along the Rockies event and you have a spare skein of fingering weight yarn that you don't really know what to do with, I'd recommend it. It's really fun so far. And um, the instructions are really clear as far as um, what to do for each row so that you have the same count after you finish a row, which is always a challenge for me, but um, this one is well written. And it's a, it'll be a nice airy scarf. Um, a couple new stitch techniques that I haven't really done before. Um, double, two double crochet together. So there's a lot of that to create the ripple. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's a, awesome project and I'm looking forward to continuing it. It's really neat when crochet projects crochet up really fast as opposed to a lot of times, you know, like I was, I'm, I've been working on my toe up socks with a difference, but um, I can work on those for an hour and I have seven rows as, as opposed to this where I started this last night. I worked on it for one episode of Downton Abbey and this is how far I got. So this is quite a bit of progress and I think it will only only zoom along from here on because I have I have a um I, I know the pattern and and I and and it's just you know it's coming. So that is the Stormy Sea scarf. As I mentioned at the top of the episode, this is going to be a very heavy prime time episode, considering I've been making my way through the yarn shops of Colorado. So I have visited and purchased things from four yarn shops, so I'm gonna go through and talk about each of them. Um, so the first one that we went to was Fancy Tiger Crafts in Denver, and they um, not only focus on knitting, but they have tons of fabric, and uh, so they're really great for sewers and quilters. So I got this tote bag there. They included this with my purchase. I think maybe I spent enough um, <laughs> that they included the tote bag or maybe they give it to all customers. I'm not sure. So the first thing that I got was I did pick up a skein as I had, um, as I mentioned in my work in progress for the Stormy Sea Scarf. This is the Colorful Eclectic Pathfinder Sock. This is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. There's 463 yards in here. The colorway is Fancy Sea Glass. It was a yarn along the Rockies exclusive colorway for Fancy Tiger Crafts. And um, the dyer is based in Golden, Colorado. So I love getting some local yarn. Um, and what I am planning to make with that yarn is a pair of socks. So uh, they had at Fancy Tiger Crafts, this free sock pattern, which is the Thunder and Lightning socks. And this pattern is by Don Henderson. And it has this really cute um, bobbles on the heels and a really nice ripple effect. And I love the pattern, or I love the design that goes down the foot. And um, cuff down socks. I'll probably work them one at a time, but who knows. So I bought that yarn to make this pair of socks. I also got a couple fun keepsakes from Fancy Tiger Crafts. I got a couple stickers that'll look great on my MacBook. And then I got for each of the ladies in my knitting group at work, I got Fancy Tiger Crafts enamel pin. So I could not I could not splurge on anything more for six people, like buying them each a skein of yarn, but um, I thought these would be cute to give them. I also bought this DIY embroidery kit, handmade by Cozy Blue. I'm planning to give this to my uh, friend who just moved to a new house um, with her husband, and she is into embroidery. 
and recently got into embroidery. So I thought this would be really cute for her to make and possibly hang up in the new home. So the embroidery kit includes a wooden hoop, a needle, pre-printed fabric pattern, embroidery floss, basic stitching instructions, and a getting started guide. I do not embroider. I hope this includes everything. Um, it seems like it does. It seems like it's self-contained. So I hope she likes that. I thought it was really cute. I also picked up an issue of the Amerisu magazine, which I actually had never seen before, but it has a ton of beautiful garment patterns, and after flipping through it and finding several that I liked, I thought it was worth it to just purchase the whole magazine. It's beautiful, beautiful photographs and um, beautiful patterns, so I would recommend checking this out. Um, if you haven't seen this magazine before, maybe I've just been living under a rock, but I haven't seen it, and so it was neat to... Um, uh, flip through something that flip through a publication other than Lana and Pom Pom, which I see all over the place. Um, so this is issue 18, summer 2019. I really love this sweater. There were a couple others that I really liked, um, including a. This is the Kapua, and because it's a summer issue of a magazine, they have a couple patterns that are made out of summer friendly fiber. So cottons, hemps, linens, things like that. The last thing I picked up at Fancy Tiger Crafts were two adorable sets of stitch markers, which were very Colorado themed. Uh, the one set had has four mountain animals. The other, the other set have four animals that you would see just in the forest. So um, I'll just try to show you these. I could probably just take a picture of them and insert it here. They're going to be hard to see, but they're really cute. So we have a little buffalo here. Um, there's a mountain lion. A moose. There's a moose. And a ram, maybe? And then the other set are a skunk. I don't know what that is. Some kind of bobcat thing. A fox and an owl. Um, so there those are. And it doesn't say who designed these. So I'm not sure. Um, one is Woodland Friends. And the other are wild animals so I just had to buy them they were just so cute next we went to the loop of you in Fort Collins we stayed one night in Fort Collins we did the new Belgian brewery tour which I would highly recommend if you are in the area and uh, at all interested in beer they give you a lot of beer on the tour and it's a free tour so before we went there um, we went to the loop of you on our way in I bought some supplies at the Loopy U. I bought two sets of Chiaogu circular needles to make the thunder and lightning socks, the pattern and yarn that I had purchased from Fancy Tiger Crafts. So I got US size 0 and US size 1, 32 inch. I think I'm going to do the magic loop, but one at a time. And I also got a crochet hook because I didn't have a crochet hook on me. Um, well, I did have one for fixing knitting mistakes, but it wasn't, it was too small. So I picked up a US size 7, 4.5 millimeter, and it was, it's a tulip hook. Let me see if I have that. Um, I just thought it was a really neat hook because it has this like comfort grip. I've never bought, I've never spent that much on a hook, but it's, it's very comfortable to work with. So I got some equipment there but of course I had to pick up some yarn so I got Lorna's laces um, hand dyed yarn this is a fingering weight yarn um, this is her shepherd sock base and it is 80% superwash merino 20% nylon 430 yards the color is 1516 Sydney so I thought I could either make socks out of this or a one skein shawl. I was thinking either 
the Pebble Beach Shawl by Helen Stewart, or the Shakya by Kino Knits, or the Aqualine by Casapinka, which all are about 400 yard shawl projects. Um, yeah, so I really loved this kind of, what is that green called? Like a, I think of it as like a military green. And it has pops of yellow and orange. Everyone knows how much I love orange. So yeah, that's the yarn that I bought at the Loopy U. They also threw in a measuring tape with my purchase, which was really neat. So now I have some Loopy U swag. The Loopy U was our first stop in Fort Collins. Fort Collins has a ton of yarn shops and I was able to go to three of them. And I also wanted to mention that um, Naomi of the Yarn Curator podcast, check out her podcast, it's really awesome. I've uh, watched all of the previous episodes. I think she's on episode four or five. Um, but Naomi lived in Colorado for a while before she moved out to Florida. And she gave me several recommendations for Denver and Fort Collins and Estes Park yarn shop. So I just went off that list and it did not disappoint. So especially the Fort Collins yarn shops because I feel like all of them had something different to offer. So at the Loopy U they had a ton of fabric, um, they had quilting classes and sewing and um, a really really big store with a lot of selections. Um, the second the second shop that we went to was uh, my sister knits which is in the carriage house of the owner's home so you basically pull up um, on a residential block and you can't miss it though because there is a couple of trees that are wrapped in yarn to alert you that you've re that you've arrived to my sister knits but that was such a fun little shop um, I'm still not exactly sure the relationship between the co-owners, I think they're sisters, but I think I met the one sister who didn't own the shop but was still working there and helping me out. Um, and of course, the two dogs that were there, one was named Molly. I'm not sure what the other dog's name was, but they were adorable and we liked to we liked meeting them. And they had chickens in the backyard, which was kind of cool. So I did not leave my sister knits empty handed and how could you? It was just such a cute shop. They had a Brooklyn Tweed trunk show going on. Uh, so it was really neat to see all of the samples knit up in various Brooklyn Tweed um, bases. And the store was two floors, uh, just a huge selection of things. So the first, the first yarn that I got was actually half off. And it's this beautiful Ching fiber, fingering weight. Um, I got two skeins of it. It was the total for two skeins was thirty-two dollars, which I was very happy with. Um, and they did not have their uh, labels on them, so the uh, the owner who was helping me pulled off another label. <laughs> and so I could know what the fiber content was, but this is super soft sock. It's 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. It's 350 meters, which converted to yards. I forget what it is. <laughs> I looked it up and then forgot to write it down. But anyway, um, I looked on Ravelry to see if I could find um, anyone else who had this yarn color in their stash and sure enough there were several so I believe this is the flamingo colorway makes sense bright pink some yellow and um, black so with this yarn I'm planning to make a two skein shawl my top contender right now is the May Apple by D. O'Keefe and um, my husband helped me pick out that pattern he took one look at it and it's a it's a very lace heavy project and he said something along the lines of you need to challenge yourself and plus this yarn wasn't very expensive so if you mess it up then you know you'll figure it out you gotta love a good shop sample when you go and visit a yarn shop and they had a beautiful cowl knit up in this yarn which is wolf folk fleet 
It is 100% Ovis 21 Ultimate Merino Wool, 131 yards per skein. And they had a sample of the 66 Triangles Cowl by Benjamin Matthews available right near the yarn. Um, it's this really interesting um, ply. I don't know if you can see that. But it just made this beautiful fluffy cowl with a really cool triangle pattern. I'll pop a picture of it here. So I'm going to use this color as the main color. They're only numbered colors, so this one is color 25, and then this gray is color two. So I thought these would be really neat together to make the 66 triangles cowl. Not so original, right? I mean, it's just so nice to find a shop sample and, and the yarn's right there and you just, you know what you're going to make when you purchase the yarn. And this wasn't really cheap. This was um, $21 a skein. So I had to buy three of these. So um, this will be for me and I will wear it with my um, navy winter coat. So I'm very excited about that. Um, Benjamin Matthews, I hadn't heard of him before. Again, maybe it's another instance of me living under a rock, but um, I checked out some of his other patterns on Ravelry and I would recommend you check them out as well. Um, I think he has a good eye for unisex patterns, which are great if you are making something for um, a guy in your life. Um, I just think he has a good sense of um, geometry and lines and angles and and construction for both men and women. He has a ton of shawl designs, but also hats and um, cowls, of course. So uh, Benjamin Matthews, check him out if he's not already on your radar. Last things I picked up at my sister knits were this sticker. Again, this will make good laptop swag or water bottle swag. Just says my sister knits. And then, of course, I had to pick up a Molly pin. This was um, the shop dog that was actually in the shop when we arrived and was just so sweet. So um, I picked up this pin. This will make a good addition to a project bag. Before we headed to Estes Park, Colorado, we stopped at Lambspun, Colorado. Um, and I, at that point, had already spent a lot more money than I had wanted to on... Um, yarn and yarn purchases and you know other other fibery goodness um so i was just gonna look but that never works out how you plan right so i got at lambspun colorado um two skeins of their hand dyed 100 percent alpaca um and this is 670 yards in one skein um, it says hand dyed, but it looks natural to me. It just looks like two different colors plied together. So I'm not sure if this um, was dyed or if it is undyed, but the tag says that it is hand dyed alpaca. So I'm just not sure. I don't really care to be honest. It looks natural to me. Um, it has a really nice halo on it. It is so soft. So my plans for these two big boys are, um, I'm either going to make a, like a, like a drapey cardigan or wrap. And the one that I saw, which is very popular on Ravelry, is the Vitamin D by Heidi Kermayer. And I have enough, um, a little over 1,300 yards to make um, to make the size medium, which I think would be great and I think would fit me um, based on the measurements. And, or I would, I would want to make like a big shawl or schlanket for my office. It would just be the coziest um the coziest wrap to make it out of this this is so soft i wish you could feel it but um that was a cute little shop as well um they had a big emphasis on fiber and spinning um the the very kind um she was a young woman uh who helped me um gave me a class schedule just to browse through and they have like an $88 three class spinning class and a ton of other um, classes for uh, weaving and doing other fiber related things. They were doing a felt making class when I was there. So I just thought it was really neat that all of the yarn shops in the Fort Collins area and I only hit three of them. I think there are four or five. I know Naomi mentioned one that we didn't get a chance to go to. 
called Your Daily Fiber. Um, and then I think there's another one that, that uh, Esther of Lamb Spun had mentioned to me. But they all have a different vibe and Esther said that they all kind of cater to different different groups and um, you know someone might go to lamb spun for knit night or someone might choose to go to the loopy U for knit night depending on what other um, what other crafts they're into and just kind of the overall vibe of the store and last but not least I got a freebie there I got a little lamb spun pin so so um, yeah, that was awesome. And everyone was just so nice at all of the shops. And, um, I'm so excited to make all these projects and I, uh, worked really hard to find or buy them with projects in mind. And if I didn't know the exact project, the kind of project I wanted to make, which I think is really important and kind of helps me cope with all of the money that I spent. Although I've heard that the the money you spend on vacation on vacation year doesn't count. So we'll go with that. That is all I have for the knitting content, the trip acquisition primetime segment. Um, so last but not least is Emily's Random Corner. So I thought I would take a few minutes to give you a trip overview if that's something you're interested in um, and just share some photos of my trip both to Hawaii and our time so far in Colorado. Um, so I flew out to Honolulu for my friend's wedding. I was a bridesmaid in the wedding and as soon as I got there I actually went to a yarn store. So I went to Yarn Story um, and it was I just don't think they do a lot of knitting in Hawaii given the climate. They did have quite a selection of cotton, um, hemp, linen, yarns. They didn't have a lot of wool, but it was like really picked over in the shop. And the shop was, it was in an office building. So it was kind of weird. Like you took an elevator up to like, like it looked like I was going to like a dentist's office. Um, and it was just one room and not a lot to see there. I was in and out pretty quickly and the woman who was working there at the time was, she she said she was like counting something or counting something for a project. So it didn't really seem like she wanted to be bothered too much. So that was my only um, fiber adventure in Hawaii. But um, the other things that I did in Hawaii, I did a day sale um, from Waikiki Beach, which was really cool. Of course, we had the wedding and the rehearsal dinner that comprised like a day and a half. Um, the bridesmaids and the bride a couple nights before the wedding went to a wine bar called Amuse Wine Bar, which was really cool. Uh, Sunday was my big adventuring day so in the morning I went to Pearl Harbor and did the half day tour of Pearl Harbor which was so it was it was amazing I really didn't know much of the history of Pearl Harbor and um, it was really humbling and uh, I, it was a you know it's a it's a national park and there's a lot to do at Pearl Harbor and a lot of different sites to see on the base so, uh, you know, in some ways, half a day really wasn't enough time, but um, I took a bus out there from Waikiki and then they returned us and we were back by like two o'clock in the afternoon. I then went and hiked Diamond Head, which is um, a small mountain that sits next to a crater. Um, so when you climb on top of the mountain, you get a beautiful view of Honolulu and Waikiki, and you also get an awesome view of the valley um, sitting next to the um, the mountain that was created by the uh, volcanic eruption many, many years ago. And then Sunday night, I went to a luau, which was really fun. <laughs> so that was at Paradise Cove, met a lot of cool people, watched some hula dancing, um, ate some... Uh, ate some good meat that they had that was fresh um, and that was Sunday Monday I went on a kayaking and biking 
adventure um, at Kailua Beach, which is about an hour drive from Waikiki where I was staying. So I spent the morning biking around Kailua and then in the afternoon I did a guided kayak tour and they took us from Kailua Beach to this small island called Flat Island, which is a bird sanctuary, walked us around the Flat Island and explained um, a lot of the things about the geography and the um, plants that were growing on the island and the wildlife, which was neat. Then I left Kailua and returned to Waikiki and packed my bags and I took a red eye to Denver to meet up with my husband. So um, we just spent the first day in Denver, uh, I spent recovering. Um, so Hawaii is six hours behind where we live in Pennsylvania and Colorado is two hours behind. So going from um, Hawaii to Colorado, I was going four hours ahead and I was very tired. I had taken a red eye and not gotten a lot of sleep. So spent the first day recovering. The second day we drove to Fort Collins. Um, we arrived in Fort Collins, did some uh, adventuring at the Loopy U, and then we went on a tour of New Belgium Brewing Company. Highly recommend. Um, we stayed at Airbnbs, and uh, the next day after we did the New Belgium tour, we drove to Estes Park, Colorado, which is actually where Logan and I got married last year in October. So it was nice to go and see Estes Park again. We did a, a tour of the Stanley Hotel. We stayed at the same hotel where we and our guests stayed when we got married. Um, we met up with Logan's coworkers parents who are letting us stay in their beautiful cabin in Fraser, Colorado. We met up with them for dinner. Um, they told us all about the hikes we could go on in Rocky Mountain National Park and they gave us the key to the house. Uh, so we stayed in Estes Park on Thursday night and then Friday we got in the car and we headed uh, to Rocky Mountain National Park around 1 o'clock. So we spent all day yesterday going through the park, stopping stopping the car, getting out, taking tons of pictures. Um, we went on one hike on the Ute Trail, which is on Trail Ridge Road heading from Estes Park to Grand Lake. So it, it took us like five and a half hours to get from Estes Park to the cabin here. And that's because we were just stopping and having a great time and taking pictures and taking video and, and really enjoying the, the trip. So, um, and today is Saturday and I think we are going to head back into Rocky Mountain National Park because we got a week long pass. So we're gonna do a couple trails that we just really didn't have time to do yesterday. And I leave on Monday, um, tomorrow on Sunday, we're heading back to Denver. We are going to a Colorado Rockies game. They are playing against the Pittsburgh Pirates. So we'll prob probably root for the Pirates, um, but apparently the Rockies are not having a great season. Um, but that will be a ton of fun and hopefully. <laughs> and then I leave on Monday. And that's been my trip so far. It's been a great trip. Um, I have loved every minute of it. An awesome getaway. And I will be back at work the day after Labor Day. So I'm just going to kind of soak up the rest of the time I have um, on vacation. So I hope to get this video edited and up within the next couple of days. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.